Hello everyone, welcome to St Matthew's and welcome to evening prayer for Tuesday the 8th of September. We're going to begin with evening prayer on page 143 and uh, our psalm for today is Psalm 135, a beautiful psalm praising God simply for who God is. And then we're going to have a reading from Proverbs 25 and a New Testament reading from Mark chapter 8. So as I say, we begin on page 143. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. O oh God, will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we are quiet before God and we seek his presence, we're going to listen to and sing, if you would like to, be still for the presence of the Lord. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. 
So we turn to this evening's psalm, which is Psalm 135. And if you're in the daily prayer book, that's on page 855. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Alleluia. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. You that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Make music to his name, for it is lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself and Israel for his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. The Lord does whatever he pleases in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He brings up the clouds from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning with the rain and brings the winds out of his treasuries. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of man and beast. He sent signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants. He smote many nations and slew mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. He gave their land as a heritage, a heritage for Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever and shall be remembered through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are but silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak. Eyes have they but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, neither is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them shall become like them, and so will all who put their trust in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Let us pray. Wise and gracious God, save us from the idols of our hearts and keep us in your living presence, that we may become a people for your praise. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's turn to our Old Testament reading, which is from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 25, verses 15 to the end, and that's on page 619 in the Church Bibles. With patience, a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue can break bones. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, or else having too much, you will vomit it. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house, otherwise the neighbor will become weary of you and hate you. Like a war club, a sword or a sharp arrow is one who bears false witness against a neighbor. Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is trust in a faithless person in time of trouble. Like vinegar on a wound is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. Like a moth in clothing, or a worm in wood, sorrow gnaws at the human heart. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat. And if they are thirsty, give them water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on their heads and the Lord will reward you. The north wind produces rain and the backbiting tongue angry looks. It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a contentious wife. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain are the righteous who give way before the wicked. It is not good to eat much honey or to seek honour on top of honour. Like a city breached without walls is one who lacks self-control.
There you go. I seem to remember that our, at our wedding, uh, some uh, bright spark sent us a card and in it was the reference Proverbs 25, verse 24, which is the reference to the wife. So um, less said the better, I think. Okay, moving on. Verse, we uh, have our New Testament reading, which is Mark 8, verses 22 to 26, and that begins on the bottom of page 41. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he looked intently and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home saying, do not even go into the village. People often point to that uh, passage, that account of a man's healing, um, which Jesus does in stages um, as uh, an example for us to persevere when we pray. Perhaps when we pray for someone to be healed, we don't see entire healing, perhaps we don't see any healing to start with, um, but this passage says to us, keep going. If you see a measure of healing, pray for more, pray for more. Um, in this instance, that's what Jesus even had to do. So uh, let's persist as we pray for people to be healed. And if when we see partial healing to start with, let's not give up. Let's trust that God wants to bring them complete healing. We continue with evening prayer on the bottom of page 145. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord that I may see the wonders of your law. And in place of the Magnificat this evening, we're going to read a canticle called Great and Wonderful, which if you've got the book, is on page 629. It's a setting of verses from Revelation chapter 15. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. So let's turn to our time of intercession. Let's take some time to look back on the day to be thankful for the signs that we have seen that the Lord is indeed good, as that psalm said earlier. How has God blessed us? How have we seen God's presence in the world? What are the things that have been tough for us or tiring? What are the things we're concerned didn't go as well as they might? Where have we messed up? Let's offer all of that to God now so that as we come towards the end of the day, we might be at peace with God and with ourselves and with others. And let's also pray for those we know who are in need. So let's just have a short, simple time of intercession.
Heavenly Father, we thank you that as Psalm 135 says, Lord, you are good. And we thank you for the signs that we have seen today in our lives of your goodness. Forgive us for when we have missed those signs. Forgive us for when we have not reflected your goodness that is in us through your spirit. Help us, Lord, to end this day in peace, at rest, knowing that you are faithful, that you love us, that you delight in us. We pray, Lord, for peace in our world, in our nation, for us and our families. We pray for healing where that is needed. Especially we pray for all the parts of our country at the moment where the numbers of coronavirus are increasing. We pray for all the people in Bolton as they face increased lockdown measures starting tonight. We continue to pray for each of us that we might be responsible, that you might remind us of your calling to love our neighbours, even where that requires us to make sacrifices ourselves. And Lord, we pray for people in particular need at this time. For those who are suffering in any way from this pandemic. For those whose health is at risk. For people whose mental health is struggling at the moment. For those who are worried about their jobs, their family income, their savings. We commend to you, Lord, all those we know who we're worried about. And Lord, we name them before you now. And the collect prayer for Tuesday evening. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that ends evening prayer for this evening. I'm going to be back leading morning prayer tomorrow. Uh, if you've not already seen the message on the various WhatsApp groups, we're going to try something different tomorrow morning. We're going to be doing morning prayer on YouTube live at nine o'clock. So if you're able to, it'd be great to know, well, I won't know at the time, but know afterwards at least, that I'm actually being joined live by some of you on YouTube at nine o'clock. If you can't join us at nine o'clock, don't worry, because as usual, it will be recorded and then you'll be able to catch up at whatever time uh, later on in the day. But I hope it'll just make it just a bit more immediate for some of us to know that we are actually praying together at the same time. So hope to see some of you, uh, at least in that way, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Have a good and peaceful night and God bless. <laughs>